Welcome everyone to the uh, January 22nd, 2024 meeting of the Town of Rochester Select Board. Um, this meeting has been posted in three public places, right? And on the town website and emailed to interested parties. So we've satisfied the um, requirements for publicizing this meeting. Mm -hmm. And we'll start off with the um, prior meeting minutes. First, we're going to have the minutes from the um, December 21st meeting. And that, um, I know you were um, not here at the last meeting, but so you wanted to look at those, and then you you happy with them? Yeah. You had a chance to look at them? Yeah, and yeah. this one here. Yep. I was, I was out. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'd move to approve that. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Yep. Short and then ones. we also have, yeah, that was a short one. The minutes from the January 8th meeting. The long one. The long one. I've had a lot of conversation about emergency services, and it's, um, yeah, I, there's a lot in there, but it, it, it's very informative. It's very informative, mm -hmm. so I'd, I'd move to approve that. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We got those entered into the record there. <clears throat> and we have, um, well, let's just go in the order of what we have here. We have the, from James Barlow, our town attorney, for the, um, tax sale engagement letter, basically um, asking him this is the agreement for him to negotiate and, and properly warn and conduct the couple tax sales that we have on the horizon. And so I'd move to, to sign that letter to him. I second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. All right. And this is one twenty two twenty four. Okay. And um, <clears throat> next we have, I believe, we have joining us um, in Zoom the um, follow up on the the conversation on the declaration of inclusion. And seeing as we um, we held on to Zoom after COVID ended, this is part of our efforts to. Um, celebrate inclusion of those that want to be in our meetings. So I believe um, Bob and Norman are, are here to, to speak on this. Do you want to make a little presentation, guys? Well, good evening and thank you for having us and putting us at the top of the agenda. I'm Norman Cohen and uh, Bob Harness is with me uh, from the Declaration of Inclusion. Um, we generally follow up uh, some way uh, to see after we present, you know, what questions have arisen, either from the select board or from the public, and I'm happy to answer them and help when uh, we can. I'm going to turn it over to Bob Harnish. I think I spoke much more than I should have at the last meeting. And um, uh, Bob is the founder of the declaration, and I think uh, we'll answer your questions, and if he needs help, I'm certainly here to chime in and i'm not shy <laughs> so, so bob thank you thank you norm and uh, uh dune it's good to see you um yeah. usually in the bike shop of course um yeah. and um uh i can stand by and and we can stand by and, and answer questions or i can make a, a short presentation to maybe be a refresher for those who uh I, I I think doing you missed the last uh, presentation, yeah, well, so yeah. uh, I could I could do that as, and as so new for you and as a refresher course maybe to the to the others. So um, I'll be quite brief. We're, we're talking tonight yeah. about a town endorsing a simple idea that 132 towns have already adopted in this uh, statewide initiative. Uh, uh, 132 towns have, have heard our presentations at a select board meeting. Those men and women discuss the merits of the idea, the moral aspects, and the uh, and the economic imperative, and voted to adopt. And um, so, over 70 percent of Vermont's population lives in those towns, and we ask you to consider joining them. So we're asking towns to uh, endorse a statement that basically says. We reject discrimination, 
we welcome people to our town. We want residents, you know, even those in what we would call the marginalized groups, such as uh, people of color, perhaps, or people with disabilities, uh, uh, anyone who would be in what we think of as a marginalized group. Um, and uh, we want residents to, those residents to feel, you know, included and safe in our communities. And, the, and, and we ask the town to commit to fair and equal treatment of, of those folks and employees, of course. Uh, so there is nothing political here. It's simply a call for respect toward everyone. So who is, who is behind this effort? This is citizen driven and, and self-funded. It's just uh, Norm, myself, and three others. But we've been fortunate to have the backing of some major uh, Vermont organizations. The Vermont League of Cities and Towns, for example, uh, the Vermont State Chamber, uh, which, which has created and, 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 and hosted our website. Uh, the, the Vermont Council on Rural Development, the Office of Racial Equity, uh, and the governor himself. So uh, I mean, I'm just going to keep it real short. And in closing, just, just refresh in your mind again the, the, the key phrases of our suggested uh, statement or declaration. And they are that the town rejects discrimination and encourages its uh, inhabitants and residents to reject discrimination, to welcome people of diverse backgrounds. Uh, we want residents to feel that they that they truly belong and are safe in our communities, and the town commits to fair and equal treatment uh, of everyone. Uh, so uh, that's it in a in a nutshell. And uh, uh, so we would welcome. Uh, any, any questions now or, or at, in a follow-up meeting? I don't really have any questions, personally. But of course I do. Of course you do, yeah, go <laughs> ahead, Pat. Right um, what are the advantages, and then what are the disadvantages of us uh, joining in the inclusion? Well, uh, the advantages are that you add to a statewide effort. We want, we want to be able to, to say to the world at large, Vermont is a welcoming state. Vermont is a state, let's face it, that, that needs population. Uh, we need workers. Um, the, the, 20, the 2020 census showed that our, our population growth is stagnant. Um, we have an aging population still living here. We're losing our, our young people to better opportunities outside the state. And uh, so this is a statewide effort to try to put out the word to town by town that Vermont is a welcoming place. And we want people to think about that, to um, uh, bring their skills here, bring their families here, and uh, and, and add to uh, our life in, in, in Vermont. I mean, it, with a stagnant population and, and yet an increasing costs of everything, the state is going to be hard pressed to maintain uh, infrastructure and services. So, uh, and, and, and towns need to grow their grand list. So we ask you to think about that aspect of it, uh, as as well as the the moral aspect of just treating everybody uh, with kindness. I'd like to add just one thing. There was a recent study, uh, I think by the uh, by the Vermont Foundation, by the group that is uh, affiliated with the Chamber of Commerce, in which they expect a hundred thousand people to retire in the next ten years. So we're going to, and if we're not keeping our students, and we're not growing the population, we need the effort to replace these people, or the state's future is not going to be very bright. Yeah, 
And um, it was Vermont Futures that did that study. And um, I think that's a very uh, salient point. Um, so is this, um, how long has this been in the works? You said the governor has signed on to it. Did he sign on to it about the same time he started offering $10,000 to anyone that would move to, to Vermont? Well, it was, it, it was, it was about three years ago, Dune, and uh, uh, that, that we first started this effort. It was shortly after that that the governor issued a proclamation uh, uh, in, endorsing the idea, and he has uh, reissued those proclamations each year for the last three years. And in, in mm -hmm. addition to that, he has, uh, uh, with a second proclamation, he has uh, named the uh, second week in uh, May as uh, Inclusion Week uh, for and, and, and in the last uh, few years, a number of towns have, have uh, created festivities around that uh, concept uh, during that second week of May. It, it had no, uh, our effort had no connection with his, with the uh, program, with, with the program of offering $10,000 um, for people to come here. If it was a connection, it was coincidental. Yeah, I was just curious because it seemed like they're both um, both um, nudging at the same same topic there about encouraging um, people to um, perhaps want to move to Vermont. So there was the the advantages are 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 there, and then I guess when Pat was asking if there are any disadvantages, I guess the um, the um, caution about um, getting entwined in something that will create more paperwork for us, included with just routine day-to-day um, -day business as we as we move on and through the years? There really should be no paperwork, uh, Dune. I would, the only thing we would suggest, I mean, I mean, we do suggest uh, some, some uh, effort at implementation. And, and one of those points is that you can just Look over town documents to be sure that there's no uh, implicit bias in 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 the wording yeah, of those which, documents. Which really there should not be in it because legally already I think we're pretty obligated to um, not discriminate. So it's it's um, yeah, yeah. The chances are you won't find that if if you if yeah. You them. yeah. Uh, in some cases that you know those ordinances were drafted many many years ago and uh, there may be some right. unconscious bias. Right. They they yeah. may refer to he uh, when they mean people in general, you know, and uh, so there's that kind of uh, uh, bias. But uh, mm -hmm. there, there, so I mean there should be no, no expense to the town uh, unless a town decides to hire someone to come in and, 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 and review their documents. But, uh, yeah. if, if the town did elect to, 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 to do something that costs some money, the, the, there are, uh, grants available from the Vermont Community Foundation of up to $10,000. Yeah. Do you do any lobbying? Does your organization do any lobbying? No. This is a completely volunteer organization, as Bob said. But we don't even have a bank account. This is just now five people who really believe that this is a step forward for Vermont and a step forward for the towns and it's necessary. So there's no lobbying, no expenses. It's just, just us. What you see is what you get. <laughs> so the last time that... Um we spoke, um, we declared that we were satisfied being under the umbrella of Vermont taking the, the Declaration of Inclusion, um, and, and that would be sufficient as Vermonters. Um, so I'm, I'm not quite sure what there is to gain since our governor has already declared um, what, what, what it would be for what advantage it would be for us as a town, since I guess we're already part of your organization, being Vermonters. Well, in a sense, in a sense, you are. Uh, but in a greater sense, there's, there's, there's value. First of all, there's value in numbers and being able to say, look, every town uh, 
or 150 or 175 towns uh, have, have endorsed this idea. But, um, uh, and I lost, I, I'm blanking out on my second point here, but um, Norm, go ahead. If well, you... we've heard that question a number of times, and I think it's a fair question to ask. Um, but I think the advantage is the governor speaks at the state level and the governor's policies and his programs uh, and the internal stuff is at statewide, state agencies, et cetera. His proclamation, while it speaks for the state as a whole, it doesn't speak for individual towns that say, and we think there's a tremendous value for the town to make it known publicly that they are an inclusive and welcoming community. And by doing that, putting the declaration they adopt uh, in their town report, uh, on, on the website, post it in various offices, and people know it then. A lot of towns, not a lot, but a few towns have said, we're welcoming, we don't need this. And our answer has been, we're not suggesting that you're not welcoming. In fact, quite the opposite. We're suggesting that it's economically and morally you know, helpful to adopt it and publicize that, make that public, so that when people look at your website, if they're coming here for a weekend or coming here for summer or looking to buy a place or move, they know what you are from day one, because it's a it's a public statement. Is this the only state that is taking on this in declaration of inclusion? That's an excellent question. Uh, and as far as we know, yes. We do know that one town in Maine adopted it because that's how we got got to it. Um, the town of Franklin, uh, way up in the northwest part of the state, uh, was the first town to adopt it. And it turns out that the chair of the select board was Bob Harris's cousin and sent it down to him as a point of interest. And Bob embraced it immediately and took it to the town of Pittsford, which adopted it. And Brandon then, correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, picked it up on its own. Um, and then Bob began to think that this had some statewide potential, and he got after Al Wakefield uh, and drew him in. And then Al mentioned it to me, and I offered to help, and it's just grown from there. So it, we know it came from a town in Maine, but we don't know how many other states, how many other towns out of here, out of Vermont, um, have it, but um, we do have 132, and it's actually 73.6% of the population of Vermont lives in those towns. Yeah, yeah. So you've um, mentioned before that in many cases it's just the select board itself decided to, to adopt this um, declaration. Um, and it seemed to me that if you're really going to make the declaration that that would be something to bring up at a town meeting. So it's actually a declaration of a larger group than just the three of us. So um, they, you know, I don't know how many times that's come up at town meetings or if it's if you if people just do it at the select board. But that's my thought that that's um, something um, this is not you know, immediately Im impacting the town economically. It's just a statement of philosophy. And I, I, I would think that um, would be a conversation to bring up at the town meeting to spice things up a little bit. Sure. I, you know, I agree with that, yeah. I think your point is very well taken. Uh, it, it turns out that only, at, so far, only, uh, I think, Norm, you can probably correct me, but only four or five towns have, have, have uh, taken it to town meeting. And all of those uh, town meetings uh, endorsed it overwhelmingly. Uh, I do know that I think eight towns are, are putting it on the uh, ballot for this town meeting. And, um, and uh, you know, you can't, you can't, 
anything that generates discussion around this concept, I think, is is healthy. And uh, and and town meeting is a is a perfectly good discussion site. Um, um, yeah. yeah, so I'd be inclined to just um, um, add that to our agenda for the town meeting to to present it to the the public at large to you know um, have that conversation we, and 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 take their 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 view on it. Would you, as a select board, want to? Uh, want to, uh, I don't know what, endorse the idea or, or but, but. Yeah, we could, I, we can, we can present it. We don't, we don't need you to come to, you know, all eight of these select board meetings to, I mean, we've got the, the gist of it. It's not a complicated. Um, you have to have an article. Right. And the Vermont, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Article. The Vermont League of Cities and Towns is, is prepared to help towns with, with with the wording of the ballot item. Um, uh, we still haven't just... we still haven't done the warning yet for the meeting, have we? No. No. So we could we could slide another another line on there. We've got pages of them. Yep. <laughs> Close. Oh, do we We're still okay. have pages? We're okay. Uh -huh. okay. Well, I I would I would suggest that that's, uh, that's yeah. our next step i i would say so yep. it's better for the town to decide rather than the three of us well and if the whole point of it is to Including. talk about inclusion then we should talk about right. inclusion <laughs> right versus uh, 10 people here and whoever's on zoom yeah right yeah. all Sorry. right <clears throat> well um we'll we'll do that wonderful thank you very much for hearing us uh, again and uh uh, good to see you, Dune. Yep, yep. I don't see you, but I you're talking at me through the aisle here, so I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember what you look like. No problem. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yep, yep. All right. Okay. Um, next on the uh, this one does apply economically to the town. This is an adjustment of the um, town of Rochester permit fee schedule, which after I don't know how many years of not <laughs> raising it, we decided to um, uh, move up the costs of some things, not not drastically, but um, this is um, went over it in the budget and finance committee meeting and it's um, still not exorbitant, but I'd move to approve the new new fees. I second that. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Right. Aye. Right. Okay. Can you read what, out what it is to look at the increase? Um, this doesn't have the old ones. I can know, like, I know, like, the building permits went from $25 to $50. Um, you know, it's a certified copies for birth and death certificates is $10. Um, copies, um, black and white copies now, 25 cents up from what? That's just what it's just been. what it was. I just wanted okay. to add it to yeah, the yeah. schedule. Add it to the schedule. So I mean, there's um, the driveway permit for a new cut onto town road is a hundred dollars. Um, the hookup to municipal sewer and water, uh, for, uh, like a new new hookup cutting into the town pipes is seven hundred fifty dollars. Um, for a commercial would be fifteen hundred dollars. Um, a permit for open trench and road boring in the town right of way would be fifty dollars, and a permit for subdivision major or minor is fifty dollars. So it's basically covering things like that. And when do they take effect? July first. July first. Yeah, this would be the next. One. Yeah. yeah. So. The next project schedule. All right, and the um, the big one, which is spent many hours of working on, is approving the fiscal year twenty five budget. And that oh, I, I skipped the mileage certificate. Okay, we'll get that back to that. <clears throat> so the total highway and general fund will equal one million. Thirteen thousand three hundred and eighty-four dollars, of which one million. No, wait a minute. That couldn't be right because we'd be raising more taxes than the the general fund. How does that? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Because it includes the articles. Oh, including the articles. The okay, so plus all the additional articles. So the amount to be raised by taxes is one million one hundred twenty-one thousand four hundred and thirty-four dollars. So that is a seven point nine nine percent tax rate increase over what was there before. Nancy, can you clarify that, or did I say something wrong? I. Or did you just say that it includes the articles? No, no. We said that is the general fund is a million thirteen, and then that's not including it the articles. It doesn't right. include any articles. Right. The right. second number the includes like no appropriations. Right. Right. The second number it it does. The second number does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the that's first what number. Should. The first number is just your um, highway and your. Um, general fund. But I don't think that we right. can raise taxes on things that haven't even been voted yet. No, we don't. The top number, the first number, is the highway and the general expenses, and though that's the number that we're voting on, right? And, and then that underneath it, it gives the full budget, including appropriations and articles, but that's not to be raised by. But I don't think that figure of a million three. Is that, is that, we don't have a million three thirteen. We got um, a million and thirteen thousand. And it's because of, let's see. That's before appropriations. I think it's these two numbers maybe. I okay, as long as it's before any that's article before, yes. that we vote yeah, because, on. Right, because those are voted on individually at the, at, at the end. So yeah. right. when people go to vote, they have to realize those other two figures are going to increase. Mm. Yes. Right. Like, and that's how that's always been. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That's how it reads in the previous, in the town, report. previous town reports. Yeah. Correct. What it all shakes down to really, though, is the, the real number that we were all um, struggling to keep down is that 7.99% right. tax rate increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is um, much less than the projected school rate increase. So I move to approve this and then to present it to the voters at the town meeting. I second that. Yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 And thanks for everyone that joined in at the Budget and Finance Committee meeting for the, the hard work to um, put these numbers together. We also have here the um, Vermont Trans Mileage Certificate for 2024. Yeah, and that should be good. Yep, yeah, and that is basically affirming with the state the um, percentage of which class of roadways that we have, and that's how they determine the monies that we get from the state. So, and if I move to to sign this and send it off to the state, I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's good. And another important one is the local emergency management plan um, of the commitment letter. This is um, the hazard mitigation assistance um, sub-application sub local match commitment letter. And um, this is... It's through a brick. It's, it's a state... Um, it's a state... The state has applied for all towns that are all for all of us and then those who want to take part in it we have to commit to our town share um, and where that money is coming from yeah which is on um, our, our commitment would be three thousand two hundred eighty seven dollars and fifty cents which is twenty five percent of the um, of the thirteen thousand yeah the grant and so. this is um, this needs to be renewed every five years so our um, deadline is March 31st, 2025. And from what I understand, it can take up to two years, but um, ours is just needing to be updated. So it's going to take a steering committee that involves the select board, somebody from the uh, planning somebody from like the fire, uh, fire and rescue and our emergency manager management um, to put this all together um, and then once we submit this we then can go out to bid and um, 
like our regional uh, Ataquichi can be part of like um, that group that it, that would submit a bid and um, would go through a bid process and then it takes that whole committee plus the contractor to put this together and have it approved. So it's a lot simpler than the Declaration of Inclusion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the reason why it's so important is because um, having this in place and approved allows the town to um, receive FEMA grants right. no, um, or any federal. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're not so much approving this as is starting the process. Starting the process. Starting the process. And Committing is something that's required. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. All right. So, so moved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we need to vote on it? I don't think so. I don't think, I think so. so. I think we I think just, just need to start. It. You just, just need to sign it. it. And then, um, okay. Who is? Whose shoulders is it on to create the steering committee? I like, think it's the emergency. It? Like I've kind of, I looked at um, Joan's folder, mm -hmm. and um, it basically would be like the emergency manager would be part of that because it's their really their right. part of it. But like we're all ready to help in any yeah. way. So Kristen basically and I. All of us, yeah. Okay. okay, so we don't just file out this at the bottom somewhere, but we nope, do it Nope, we got to stay on top of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, um, the December treasurer's report. And that's, um, we keep spending money, and um, yeah. next batch of taxes is due in, uh, what, three Double weeks? weeks. Yeah, yeah, three, three weeks. weeks. So um, yeah. I'd move to approve this report. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. All right, and then we come to the um, next interesting thing on the agenda is uh, continued discussion about the high school. And I think Catherine and Vic, that's what you guys are here for, and you too, Rob, probably, and everybody. We heard from Sarah Wright. Yep. Um, we haven't gotten the actual report yet, but the good news is that um, the end of the phase two is completed. And there were, was nothing found that raised uh, uh, the standard to uh, any kind of regulatory action. So basically, high school looks good. So does the phase two, is that, did that include a PCB uh, yep. inspection? Yeah, that, that was the environmental that. study. That was the environmental, so well, that's good. Because yeah. that was a big question for a while there. It's it's all the, excluding the, the underground oil tank. Right, they still have to come to the tank. Yeah. So, yes, that has not been removed yeah. because the cost of installation of the interim above ground was going to be $175,000. So Jane McInerney uh, asked if we could just keep the underground tank in place. And we had a discussion with Sarah, and she said that the certificate of completion would just have the exclusion of the underground tank and that at some point, when that is removed, Jamie committed to paying for the cost of removal and any kind of mitigation cleanup should leakage be found. That, of course, if the vote goes yes, that would be included in the purchase and sale agreement. It has to be. And in fact, you know, I, I've got to thinking because whoever is the owner is responsible, even though he's committed to it. So the transfer of liability, as far as the state's concerned, goes on the town. And superintendents can come and go. So I thought maybe it would be a good idea for you to meet with Jamie and just get that in writing so that that commitment that was made through him can be honored at such time should the town acquire the building. I, I spoke with him today, but if you want to have something like that in writing, then I just think it's a good idea, idea mm -hmm. because it's been discussed and rediscussed, but. Yeah. So that was a, a major question around proceeding with the vote was whether or not the buildings and the grounds were in acceptable condition from an environmental standpoint. So the flood way has been cleared with the uh, change of the property designation. The flood plain has been cleared 
with the addition of the flood doors, which have been installed at the school's expense. Uh, the interior, the assessment of the interior for contamination has been resolved, and now the exterior has been resolved. So all the environmental stuff, except with the exception of the fuel tank, which is yeah. that we were just talking about, um, says that you know this building, which was a liability <clears throat> from an environmental standpoint, at least an unknown, mm -hmm. is now a developable asset. Uh, still can't be developed for housing, uh, unfortunately, but uh, has, is available to be developed for other purposes, the kinds of things we've been talking about. <coughs> so that's a big deal. Yeah. To have, you know, gone yeah. through all of that and we're reporting it. But you should also get the full report if you haven't gotten it already, so. So this, um, this brings then to the issue of just getting closer to the time for the vote, for the town to vote on whether or not to purchase the building? You guys are the ones who are deciding on the date of the vote. Have you scheduled or planned or done work on the informational meetings? Uh, just begin to do that. Yeah, we've got a draft slide deck. Um, well, you saw what earlier version of it. And uh, some folks who are very interested in seeing this happen and want to have an informational program, a campaign, uh, pulling together information uh, to address you know, what this project is about. And we're, we're providing facts and information. And they're the front people for telling the story. So, as you know, I was at a concern of that there's a difference between information and promotion. Uh, and I, 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 and I know we've had this conversation a mm -hmm. hundred times. So, uh, I, just, I hope that in the planning of the information package, the presentation, that there's a way to make the bad news in there with the good news. Yes. Uh, you know, with respect, the last town meeting report, you guys had four pages of information and one sentence about how it was going to be paid for. So just in an informational sense, I, I felt that the position of those who are worried about money, and to me it's always been a money issue, didn't get a full upfront feeling of, you know, what's, what's the good news and what's the bad news? Mm -hmm. And, and I think this, I think it's extremely important. The job, the job, the responsibility, from my point of view, I, is is informing people mm -hmm. of the whole story, mm -hmm. not convincing them would be really great. Mm -hmm. The convincing them that it's really great is like a different job. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I, you, you know, I love you both, and I, I've said this before, but I just, if you, when you go to put these information packages together, please put the money up front. You, you were at that uh, November second uh, slide presentation in the library, correct? Mm -hmm. So, did you think that we had that kind of information in the slide deck? It was certainly there, but it didn't have the kind of foreground weight that, that I feel it should have. Mm -hmm. Now, bear in mind, this is just uh, this is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's so big, $3 million, $100,000 a year forever. I mean, it's a very, very big financial commitment, even discussion. And I just feel that that really needs to be up front, the weight of it, what it means, and the questions it raises, and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that tends to be set aside for, for just a kind of an upbeat promotional tone. Not really. You know. In my opinion, no. because I mean the whole Sanders um, earmark is for the upgrade of the building. So whenever we've talked about that, I mean we've all listed everything that's included in the upgrade, and and the feasibility study is the same figure that we're using because that's the figure that we have, and that included the 35 percent. Uh, inflationary uh, on top of, you know, the original cost what of base costs were. So, I mean, I think the thing that uh, is, can't be certain is, you know, who the tenants are absolutely going to be at this point. I mean, we have a lot of interested people, but we still have to get commitments, tenant commitments, and um, we're passing out the information of what the what the space would be rented at, and so, I mean, th those are just figures, and they're in there. Um, well, let's just say that you and I have a different view of the tone, and I respect you, and God love you, but I, I would say that you and I have a different view of the tone I'm talking about, and I'm just talking about hard facts, the difference between hard facts and, and, a, and a kind of, and I understand you love it, and I understand you've given all this time to it, and that you're a true believer in everything else, but in of the responsibility to the public to let everybody know what the, what the cost risk is 
in addition to what the benefits Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm only one vote. You know, I mean, Me too. select board has decided that it's going to be a town vote, and it's going to be a town vote. So. Um, but I'm really just talking about the information, John. Mm -hmm. That's all. I don't need to beat it to death. Mm -hmm. I'm just. I said this before, and I'm, I'll just say it again. You know, with with fondness and respect to both of you. I have a question. Um, the last time we had a discussion, um, <clears throat> there was still the up in the air issue about the the Bernie Sanders money, the quote unquote Bernie Sanders money, um, and that um, there was there was no expectation of a decision anytime soon, or we just did, didn't know. We, we, the project passed through Senate appropriations, so the yeah, Senate is approved. Last year. But if you're, if you're keeping track of what's going on in DC, I mean, okay, well they're, that, they're just going month to month just to fund the government, so no money is guaranteed till Congress pays, passes the bill. Are you prepared to go to a town vote without the knowledge of whether or not that money is available? Well, the select board has said all along that once you get the results of the environmental study that you'll take it to a vote. Obviously, we may not know for a long time about the earmark. We are looking into other funding sources uh, at, as we speak, and we're, we're preparing ourselves for an implementation grant, and we were told by uh, Nathan Cleveland at ACCD that we were one of the strongest projects in the state. And we recently learned uh, from Kirk White that we're number nine on the Green Mountain Economic Development Corps top 10 projects. So, People are looking at us and they're saying we look good and, you know, we, we want the Sanders money, so but we can't rely on only the Sanders money and then once they pass the bill, will it be $2.3 So you're comfortable going to a vote without any solid money going forward? Let me just, let me just express my position, okay? We spent working for the last three years on behalf of the school board and, and the select board to explore potentials for the, build, uh, for the building. We've gone through the feasibility study, we've gone through the regulatory process, and I can't magically make money appear. We don't own the building. And we learned in April, because we don't own the building, we were really not eligible for a lot of <coughs> significant funding. So as long as we don't own the building, we're in this middle ground, you know? And we have, we su at some point, we have to have a vote, and that is not my job to determine when. That's the three of you to, do to just decide that. So there's people who, are, who express opinions uh, similar to Rob with uh, caution and concern about taking on such a, a, a project in terms of town ownership. The Budget and Finance Committee say that in that interim period that we expect the town to own the building during the upgrade, that the tax uh, rate would be forty dollars per hundred thousand. That's not a whole lot of money for a taxpayer. That's what you were at that 60, meeting. Sixty. Well, you were you're quoting forty at the meeting the other night. Sixty less what's already being paid. That currently. Oh, from the school, right? Because that we so we we're already paying a portion of that in our t school taxes. That's what you mean, mm -hmm. right? But then we wouldn't be paying the school taxes because it would just transfer right. over to the town. Mm -hmm. So it's sixty. No. For a hundred thousand, or it's forty. Sixty minus twenty is forty. 60. Yes. So the town people are already paying twenty. Yeah. Just so explain I, it. Explain I, it. Um, how? Why you're saying that? I'd be impressed to see our town the school taxes go down when we if when that building is sold. But <laughs> I mean, theoretically, <laughs> they would. But I think that's uh, not a big part of the school budget. Right. So it's, it's not. not. It's that's not. the whole yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. The high yeah. school is not a big part of the school <coughs> budget. Yeah. 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 We had a yeah. conversation with Jamie last week. He estimated that the operating cost of the building is about $60,000, mm -hmm. of which uh, 20 or so is paid by Rochester, 20 by Stockbridge in round numbers. The mm -hmm. rest, I guess, grants and other school funding that I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, so, if the building is not on the school's responsibility anymore, then in theory, that tax uh, burden on the Rochester people goes down by that twenty dollars. So that's what twenty thousand. Oh, that's why he's okay. So the net is, that yeah. impact is forty. Yeah. 
Let me, let me say as kind of an example of what I was talking about. Well, what Kurt White actually said was that the project was at the bottom of the list, number 18, and that he went and lobbied and, and you know, talked the project up. It worked, did, did his job, and it came up. But there well, were it had to do with there urban were concerns. Basis. There were concerns about the project. And, and those concerns were that there wasn't any business buy-in. Well, all I'm saying is that the, the, whole, the whole story of the Kirk White involvement is a larger story. Said? I'm just saying that the whole story. I'm, I'm just saying the whole story of the Kirk White. It's it's a little bit like uh, like saying that the the or acting like the uh, Bernie Sanders uh, is in the bag when it's not. Oh well, wait so, a second. Uh, now, is Kirk White? He didn't talk to me, but but I have talked with Erica Hoffman Kais, and she asked us to submit a regional projects form, which we did. For, to be uh, included in that top 10 projects. And from what I understand from Sarah and also from what was in the paper, that the argument that, that uh, Kurt presented to the board was that they've got to focus more on rural development instead of just be exclusively in urban. And the prob problem with our project is there wasn't any significant business <coughs> buy-in. Well, I, I understood it, and we don't need to make, take everybody's time. Well, you it. were there. But I understood that as, as the, the kind of the level of professional involvement, business, maybe business involvement is a way to say this. But all I'm saying, I'm just talking about information here, mm -hmm. is if you're going to talk about the Kirk White thing as a plus, you've got to tell the whole Kirk White story. I that's wasn't all. there. That's all. I wasn't there. Well, but, but it's, I'm, making, I'm just making a point about information. I'm not condemning you. Did, it's he about say we were no, did he say we were number nine? He said you were at the bottom of the list and went to number nine. So we're number nine, correct? Yeah, except number eight is the point. You don't, you don't get into the thing until number eight. You don't start getting money until number eight. So you were, okay. you were basically, you went from not getting... Well, I didn't from, know that. That's so, information right there. Okay. But I'm not... Your point's well taken. Yeah. I, I okay. yeah. So you guys have done an awful lot of work on, uh, on behalf of the town as a committee to, to keep this moving and really appreciate that and you're probably anxious to have this come to vote so we can see what well, we're at the stage now where we're developing yeah. the 501c3 the Valley Hub Incorporated right. so <laughs> we're developing the board of directors we're ready to file for the 501c3 I mean things are moving along but and it's been a lot of work and a lot yeah. of energy at some point there's got to be a decision so in answer to Pat's yeah. question how do I personally feel at this point I feel as though it would be good for us to really know. It would be good for the select board. You uh -huh. know, I know that you all have your particular frame of mind towards the project, but it would be good to have the select board more involved with the process at this point. Because if the if the vote is yes, it, it can't be a surprise to you. There's got to be whatever the next step is. You know. So the five hundred one is not formed yet. It is. The it nonprofit exists. is formed. It's uh, Valley Hub Inc. is a is a I said Delmar is a Vermont not for profit. Uh, we're in the process of building a board. And we, we are working with an attorney, and then we'll okay. file for the five hundred one c three tax exemption. Okay, but the state is aware of the Valley Hub. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm the incorporator. Well, well, that's good. So. Um, we can discuss it when we get, we can go into um, executive session, discuss discuss it further, or we can discuss it openly. I don't know what discussion we need to have in, in, in executive session. There's nothing, then we just have to come out of executive session and share what we talked about anyway. <laughs> so why don't we just yeah, yeah, we'll get it. It's the, um, one question I had is, since we've just finished the budget, which we just kind of really scrubbed down to get a, under a 10% increase in the tax rate this year, then to turn around and if, so if we vote to buy it, at what point do we take possession? Because that would throw our budget um, to the wind if that means that we're assuming the responsibility for that building in this ne in this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Can we make a commitment to buy it and then have that figured into the next budget? Or as I know what the, the uh, that's I guess my question is what it would be the time frame for when that would 
if one, we'd make a vote whether the town uh, agrees yes or no, we should buy it. But then two, when when would that happen? Because that would really. So you're asking me. Um, no, I'm just throwing we're that just, out there. We're just saying there's no money in the budget that we we are going to adopt or we're going to try to adopt in in March that has any money towards the school, and that's what we're saying. Yeah. So if we if the town votes to purchase the building in March or May, I mean, April. April or whenever the school board is, because we have to do it through Australian ballot, then we're going to be looking at another year before we even address the, the money issue, because we're not putting money into it this year on our budget, because we just, we're at an 8% increase now, and we whittled that down from, well, a lot. it was a lot, and we worked it down to get where we are. We scrubbed the heck out of it. And so there's no money in this budget that we're going to adopt in March, which is for 25, 24, 25, that will support the school. Right. So um, our concept of the vote is it's a two-part question. One part is to acquire or not acquire the building. And the other part is a special temporary tax rate to support the building. In other words, if you're voting yes for the building, you're voting to impose a property tax to support the building, which is going to need, you know, if it's $60,000 a year. Right. Um, and, you know, for some people, that's going to be a non-starter. Um, and for other people, it's okay. So that's, you know, the nature of a vote, mm -hmm. one way or the other. So, so it's not intended to be to open the current budget back up, but to add an additional one on top. And if people are feeling you know, too stretched, this is too much, they'll vote so. Uh, but the, you know, the building's going to need to be supported with money. It wouldn't be coming from the school anymore. Soon the, the closing would occur in the next fiscal year, uh, you know, starting July 1, 24. And let me just say, in terms of this project, we don't ever want this to be a Vic and Catherine project. We want this to be a town project. So either the town buys into it or the town doesn't buy into it. But at this point, we've come to a kind of defining moment in terms of what is the will of the town. Yeah, well, I thought it was more the town being the facilitator for the Valley Hubs project. Mm, no. no, the Valley Hub is only at a manager at this point. If we can't even, I mean, a brand new 501c3 is not gonna be able to take on that whole liability of that building. We, the, it's to manage the building and the tenants and all that other stuff, but the town's got to take the ownership of the building, at least for the first few years. I mean, the town would be a much stronger yeah. applicant for grant funds yeah. than a nonprofit yeah. with no track record. Mm -hmm. you, you even have to establish yourself as a 501c3 for a while and before you're even eligible for the big, big bucks. So it really comes down to that. It's got to be town, town decided. That's going to cost us more than our budget that we put in for the grant administering. Right. But that's something that we'll have to figure out after the vote. Go from there. Yeah, like hiring a grant administrator. Well, because like, no, that's like no, a I know, seriously. Job. Yeah. I know, I know. And I don't want it. I know, I don't blame you one bit. We, you've got enough to deal with in there. Yeah. What are you administering now? Seven or eight grants? Yeah. That's the problem. It's going to take on another one like that. Like I that. I mean, we're going to have highway ones coming up. I mean, we know that. We're going to have to deal with another bridge coming up and yep. four trucks. Yep. In the next three or four years, mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that it's possible to negotiate with the school. If, you vote, if the town votes to acquire, there can be you know, in the process of negotiation when the actual full transfer goes on, when the purchase and sale. I mean, yeah. this whole thing has taken steps. And we have been working very much in partnership with RSUD. And as Vic just said, they paid for the whole floodplain mitigation. Yeah. yeah. And we're hoping that the school will continue to use the building once certain decisions are made. And we just got a $10,000 extension of our planning grant to do architectural work. So, you know, and we got waived for the historical uh, part of NEPA. 
Well, back to uh, Patty's question to Catherine about would, would we want to go ahead with the vote on April 30th not knowing or even getting a negative response on the, uh, on the uh, Sanders grant? That's a risk. That's a real risk. And yeah. I'm not sure everybody is in agreement with in a, in a group we're working with. The whole project's that. a big risk. Yeah. And it really is. And, and, we're in a, and the town is going to be tough to hold that because we're green list is stagnant. We don't have developable properties. So you, you aren't going to increase your taxpayers. You're only going to increase the amount of money you're going to raise by taxes. So it's going to be a tough call. And I, I said it from the start. I don't see how we can afford to do it. Mm. But, you know, it's got to go through the vote. And I certainly feel that that's the proper way whatever the town yeah. decides to do is yeah. what they decide to do and I think presenting the facts like Rob says you have to present that's all, of, all yeah. the facts and you can't just I don't think we're hiding can, facts. I'm not saying you are Catherine I'm just saying you got to present this as a as what it's going to do to your pocketbook because if mm -hmm. you don't you're just being foolish and that's the way I look at it and I've said that from the beginning and I'll keep saying it because I don't see any way out of it. I really don't. Well, there's But that's my opinion, really, so really that's all. And I have one vote, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Mm -hmm. You just look into the facts. The facts have been continually put out there. And right. we'll continue to do that. I mean, we're trying to figure out how to make them accessible so that people don't have too much to read before they can really access the information trying to you know edit it down to the core points I mean the facts are both ways there's the facts of what the risks in terms of costs are but mm -hmm. there's also the facts about the risk for actually not owning the building mm -hmm. and there's the other side of it there's risks on both sides yeah, yeah. demolition ain't cheap either there's risks on no. both sides no. no it isn't nothing's cheap on that mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy either way. No question about that. So, is this going to be a separate vote, separate than the, the school vote? Or April what? 30th is the, is the date that has been chosen for the vote. It's April 30th. after town meeting, before school budget meeting. Mm -hmm. The school budget will be out by then, so it'll, everybody will have their school books by that time. Um, the actual vote, though, is on the because it's Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. So this will be Australian ballot also. Yep. So that'll be on the day of the school vote. No, no. prior we're to the school vote. We're going to do it that way. We're going to have a vote separate. Yeah. Yep. Just okay. Rochester only. All right. Sounds like the plan. When is the school vote? The following week, the following Tuesday. There is a. Uh, the the school Thursday is a thirtieth uh, is a Tuesday, Tuesday. Okay. and then we, we go to vote on May sixth for the school for, for the school, school. yeah or yeah. er, sorry May seventh would be a Tuesday May school superintendent yeah. May seventh would be a Tuesday asking yeah. for a vote and willing to take ownership of the building if the vote is no um, he he is he is prepared to deal with it one way or another mm -hmm. so um he's not he's not looking for a vote to purposely try to make the building leave his budget um he just wants to know if it's in his budget or not in his budget he's asking for a vote to determine so jamie is this jamie you're talking about yes so yeah. that it's not just hanging in limbo right. in his budget in and out of his budget yeah yeah, yeah. We yeah, get he's looking for closure. No, and so are we. And he's yeah. he's very much aware that he could retain the ownership of the building. Mm -hmm. Right. What well, does that give him enough time if it's a week <coughs> ahead of their vote to to <laughs> do the final vote? Well, I, I think they're keeping it in their budget. I would say they probably yeah. have it in their it's, budget it's now. Very easy to just bury so it when would the it. informational meetings be? Prior to that, April. Prior 30th. to yeah. April. Yeah. 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 So February, March, April. I would think uh, as well as an informational meeting, there should be uh, something mailed out to all the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. to well, we get a big mailing yeah. in October, and yeah. we'll do it again. We're yeah. updating the 
the fact card yep. because we have things that are known to us now. So, and we we sent that to every single Rochester um, resident, yep. whether they were a voter or not. So. Yeah, no, I think there'll be some heavy discussion at town meeting, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the vote happens after town meeting yes. on its yes. own. After yes. April thirtieth. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that town meeting would be an appropriate time to present that this vote is coming up and and put right. out the you know. March fourth. I thought it was uh, the select board's wish not to have a large discussion about the school at town meeting. Because we were well, I'm, in that. I'm just saying it's going to come up. Yeah, I mean, yeah I, it's going to come up, but how I mean. do you want we're to not, handle it? We're not really sure about it. I mean, it's just. It's the biggest issue coming down the pipe. I mean, it would be hard not to talk about yeah. it. Maybe we could give it, have to give a date for an information meeting like a week later or something so people can. There might be something in statute, too, that you have to follow. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Before an Australian right. ballot vote, yeah. I, I think, think there's like two informational meetings in there. We were going to have a separate yeah. informational, just so that it can everybody can really get the facts and it not have to be squeezed in between other issues. So because, as Frank says, there's going to be a lot of discussion. We want the discussion. We want the questions. Well, there should there should be a lot of discussion. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a it's a major step, no matter what what the outcome is. So uh, targeting the date of April 30th, um, are you all online with doing a vote, scheduling a vote, warning the vote? Yep. Okay. And there's a, I know that you've been does, in contact. Does the town attorney need to actually write the text of the, whatever's being voted on? You mean the warning? The, well, not only the warning, but the actual text of what people are going to read. Which is the warning. Yep. Oh, that, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, probably best. Yeah, we yeah. usually have Jim Barlow yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. agree, you know, yeah. scratch it up. And are, uh, do I understand you to say that there's, there's, you said there were two issues. One is, do you want to acquire the building? Second, do you want your taxes to assume well, the building? So is that one vote or is that two votes? Well, I don't. It seems to me that it's two questions, but it seems to me that if you're going to acquire the vote, the building, that you also okay, have to so that's assume question. that. It's one question, two, yeah. two, yeah. two parts to it. I think. I think in light of that, I, I would think that to me it's, it's one question for this time around. And then you work with Jamie because they've got the school in their budget for another year then it's another year before the funding aspect comes into it anyway. So you've got, if they say yes to the building, then you've got the Plus following the budget year to put it in there, and you'd have a better idea what your costs are going to be anyway. You. Be, what's that? You. Yeah. You're the you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know who the you is. <laughs> uh, and then so you have a better understanding of what your costs are going to be at that point. That's good so point. so the the money's not going to be a, a issue this coming budget cycle. It will be the following budget right. cycle. Yeah, it's being talked about, though, because yes, that's part yes, of the, it's, absolutely. It's a big We want people to know up front what's the, yeah. what's the cost burden, whether it's this year or next year. Right. You know, if they signed off on, you know, good building, happy, happy, but you yeah. got paid for it. A dollar. Right. <laughs> yeah. A dollar. Right. <laughs> exactly. And the building is <clears throat> functional. The building can be used. Right. You know, it can, you can start doing things with it. You can yeah. start earning some money with it. You know, it's right now it's just been sitting there not earning any money at all. Not even being functional, <coughs> except for yeah. the auditorium. So the warning, I mean, if we follow that, and if Jamie's agreeable to keeping that money in the budget, I mean, if it's already in the budget next year, then I think the warning would have to say to acquire the building and be responsible for the operating expense estimated at $60,000 or whatever it is. So people know up front Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is coming, maybe not immediately, right. but down the road. Yeah. Right. And I and I think working with Jamie is a good idea. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay.
think we've got that one down. All right. Not too early to start on the morning. No. <laughs> April 30th. Okay. All right. We have to check for the timeline on that. If it's got to be worn within 30 days or Before what is that? Is, is it 30? Yeah. No and the informational. It's a, it's a town meeting. Right. And the informational meetings should be two they weeks be prior, two, up to two up weeks to prior. No, or they a can be prior. a week prior. Just like with your town meeting. Right, that's what I was getting at, the numbers. It would be more of like getting the warning. But you have to right. meet all those and other meeting the paper postings. Yeah, um, right. Deadlines and stuff. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. 